This is Marshall Stewart with the Americans in Wartime Museum. Today's date is 15th May, 2015, and I'm conducting an interview with Junior G. Kirkbride in Triangle, Virginia. Okay, uh, could you tell us your full name and where you were born and your date of birth? Uh, Junior G. Kirkbride, uh, born in Seneckville, Ohio. January the 2nd, 1924. Okay, and what war did you participate in? Uh, Which wars did you participate in? I participated in World War II. Okay. Do you have any other military uh, veterans in your family? Uh, there was four, there was five of us all at the, all at the same time. Two in the Army and uh, one in the Navy and myself in the Marine Corps. And these were siblings? I or? said, did I say three in the Army? Yes. Yeah. Three in the Army, one in the Navy, one in the Marine Corps. Yeah. Were these brothers, cousins? Uh, they were brothers. Brothers? Yeah. Uh -huh. Why did you pick the Marine Corps? Uh, we really went up to, uh, I, I, was, I was with uh, two friends of mine one evening, and uh, and I come up with the idea. I said, "Let's go join the Navy." So we went up to the uh, Navy recruiter in the in the uh, 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 post office building. The Navy recruiter wasn't there, and uh, so we we come out in the hallway, milling around, and. They, Tech sergeant comes out of the Marine Corps recruiting office and asks him if, I could, if, if he could help it. I said, where's the Navy recruiter? Well, he's at lunch. Uh, so, well, if you want to, you can come in here and sit down, you know, until he gets back. So he went in the Marine Corps recruiting office and sat down, and we all walked out of the Marines. <laughs> they were good at that, weren't they? Yep. Yeah. Now you uh, you enlisted in August of 1942. Yes. Uh, so can you tell me uh, where you were and what your thoughts were when? What's that? Can you tell me where you were and what your thoughts were when Pearl Harbor was bombed? Uh, I was out in uh, in Montana, uh, Missoula, Montana. Uh, I was part of the Civilian Conservation Corps, and. Uh, as soon as the uh, as soon as the uh, uh, Pearl Harbor was bombed, it wasn't uh, more than a month after that they disbanded the uh, disbanded the uh, uh, Conservation Corps, and we all went home, and uh, and uh, so later on I joined the Marine Corps. What did what did you do between disbanding and joining the Marine Corps? Uh, well, I, I got out of the I got out of the uh, civilian conversation corps and uh, almost immediately joined the Marine Corps. It is, uh, uh, there wasn't a, there wasn't a whole lot of time lapse uh, in between. Okay. Because uh, I, I was going to join the Navy, like I say, but I, I got into the Marine Corps. And uh, did you ever regret joining the Marine Corps? Uh, no, it was probably one of the smartest and dumbest things I've ever done in my life. <laughs> okay. And, uh, so, where did you go? Did you go to uh, boot camp? I went to boot camp in San Diego. And tell me a little about your experience there. Well, that is, uh, we were called Hollywood Marines <laughs> because <laughs> it was San Diego. That is, uh, but it was just, uh, uh, Probably like any training camp. Uh, that, that is, uh, we first went to uh, 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 Marine Barracks for initial training. Then it went to Camp Elliott for uh, uh, further training. And uh, after that, we went overseas. Uh, when were you uh, uh, assigned to the? Um, well, this is the the first combat engineer. Yeah. But was it, is, it wasn't called that at the time, was it? Uh, no, it wasn't called the co first combat engineers until after Guadalcanal. That it was is the first uh, pioneer battalion. Uh, 
when I went over, I went over as a replacement at the canal at the very, very end of it. Uh, uh, we got, I got in on the battle of the Montani, uh, the second battle of Montani Cow River. And uh, after that, uh, uh, I guess the Japs uh, evacuated Guadalcanal. They figured it was a lost item. Right. And uh, so then we going on board ship, went down to Melbourne, Australia. That is, I went to a place called Mount Martha for the staging and everything of our next campaign. Okay, let's go back to Guadalcanal. Well, let's go back to when you got on board ship. Yeah. Which was after your uh, secondary training yeah. in California. Where did you get on board ship? We got on board ship at San Diego. San Diego, and you went to? Uh, we got on the USS Little Line. Right. At a, uh, and then, like I say, they, uh, uh, we were dropped off first uh, at, uh, at the canal at his replacements for some of the ones that were killed. And they were also taking uh, uh, people from the first, the NCOs and the officers and so forth, uh, uh, back to the States to form a, uh, uh, to form a nucleus for the second or third war uh, uh, divisions. Right. So uh, that's the reason. That's probably the reason we went went uh, went ashore at the canal. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had to, they wouldn't have needed us. So. Uh, what did you do when you went ashore? What? What did you do when you went ashore? Uh, well, we just filled in until the until that battle of the Botanic How came, and then it wasn't uh, very long after that. Uh, after the Japs had evacuated the whole canal. Uh, we uh, got aboard ship and uh, went down to Melbourne, Australia. Right. But uh, as a, um, as an engineer, what kind of work were you responsible for? Well, first you were actually line company people. Then after, and uh, 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 we uh, we work with explosives, and if if it needed something fixed, like a. Uh, Corduroy, uh, wet spot across a creek or something like that. That's the kind of stuff we done. And uh, after the after the campaign was over, and uh, uh, no more fighting, uh, the line company people rested, and we went to work building roads and building buildings, whatever whatever needed to be done. Right. Did you work with CBs? Uh, no, the CBs more or less stayed to themselves. That is, but we did have, we did have a CB outfit. Uh, well, let's put it this way: as uh, we hit Cape Gloucester and we wanted to get an airstrip uh, to uh, to uh, bomb uh, Rabu and places like that, and uh, I. Th I think the army was there, and they couldn't get anywhere. And they finally got rid of the army and sent in a, uh, a CB outfit, and uh, they had uh, they had an airstrip up and running in about ten days. So, uh, okay. Uh, but uh, uh, well, now we didn't help on something like that. That is because the CBs, uh, the CBs, and the construction. Uh, the the uh, combat engineers didn't really mix. That is, so uh, it was it was their job, and they done it. And if if we had a job, we done it, and they did get, get involved in it. So, as combat engineers, did you have heavy equipment? Uh, yes, our heaviest equipment was D8 dozers. Uh, we probably had drag. We had drag lines. Uh, uh, Anything you know that would build a road or build a build a airstrip or something like that, and that is uh, like uh, uh, steamrollers. Right. Steamrollers, yeah. Did you have basically the same equipment the CBs had? Oh no, they had a lot more equipment. No, no, they had a lot more equipment. All right. Hell, they even had ice cream makers. <laughs> um. When did you leave Guadalcanal? When did, when did we leave Guadalcanal? Right. 
We left Guadalcanal on December the 27th, I think it was. Okay. Yeah, of 40... 42. 40, 42, 43. yeah. Yeah, 42. Yeah. Okay, and then you went to Australia. Yeah. And uh, how long were you in Australia? Uh, we were in Australia from, uh, we actually got into, really into Melbourne. Uh, and uh, and uh, got ourselves anchored on a place called Mount Martha. That be the, about the first of uh, first of January, and we were there until oh boy, we were there probably for six months, and uh, then we went aboard ship. And uh, uh, we went north to a island called Goodenough Island, which sat in the in its big channel between uh, New Britain Island and uh, uh, New Guinea. And we we were there. We were on Goodenough for oh probably three months, and. Uh, they took us off good enough and headed north to a place of uh, Fetch Haven, uh, New Guinea. And uh, after three days, after we got off ship and everything, after three days they found out we didn't belong there. So uh, we went back aboard ship and uh, uh, went back aboard ship and uh, went down to the very southern tip of New Guinea, a place called Milne Bay. And uh, we stayed at Milne Bay. This was our, this was our, our uh, this is the place where we trained for our next operation. And uh, uh, finally we lo loaded on the LSTs at, uh, at uh, Milne Bay and uh, headed for the island of New Britain. Hit a, and uh, hit a place called uh, Cape Gloucester. And uh, after at, at Cape Gloucester, we, that is, uh, well, we just got as many Japs as we could. And uh, until finally, that is when it was kind of settled down, we went on a long patrol, a, a, a whole uh, 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 two companies. We were chasing uh, this General Homa, who was the instigator of the death march, uh, the Bataan death march. We were trying to get him, and uh, he was uh, he was ahead of us, and uh, so we come back from that operation. Uh, and we got into into uh, we uh, both operations. Uh, we had to use boats to get up to to where we wanted to re-land on on uh, New Britain Island. And uh, 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 see. oh, okay. Anyway, we come back that operation, and uh, probably. Probably three weeks later, we were put back aboard uh, LCMs and went up the island of New Britain and hit a place called Talisia. Uh, we're still trying to we're try, still trying to catch this Homa, and uh, uh, they were just one step ahead of us. So finally, we came back to uh, we come back to base, and uh, I think it was sometime in. Uh, sometime in March, the end of March, the end of March, we uh, we were pulled out of we were pulled out of uh, New Britain. I don't know if the army came in the garrison, and uh, uh, we headed for the for uh, uh, island called Pavuvu in the Russell Islands. And that was our that was our next staging area. For the next operation, okay. and uh, uh, 
the only thing they had there was rats and rotten, rotten coconuts. Uh, and uh, huge, uh, <laughs> huge land crabs. <laughs> so anyway, we stayed there. And as, while we were there, we had to go to a smaller island to cut timber to build a mosquito safe uh, mess hall on, on, on Pavuvu uh, uh, so the mosquitoes didn't eat our food first. <laughs> they were that big? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, and, and it was also a place where, that is, you never ate, unless you were in the line, and you never, you were never in the line if, if, if you didn't stop at the at the um, the Corbin's the Corbin's chair and, uh, and getting in the chow because you had to take Atterburn for uh, to uh, ward off the malaria and uh, but we stayed there until uh, we stayed on the, we stayed in the Russell Islands until uh, oh boy. Stayed in the Russells. Well, we actually we left the Russell Islands. Uh, we left the Russell Islands uh, and went right to uh, the island of Pelu in the uh, in the Central Pacific, a part of the Caroline Islands. And uh, uh, we landed there. That is uh, had one hell of a fight. Actually. Uh, uh, the first uh, D-Day on, on, on Peleliu, uh, somewhat rocking the boat. That is, that is the D-Day on Peleliu, we were pinned down on the beach. And uh, uh, the next morning, the next morning, apparently that the guys at night had, 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 had got us some territory and uh, uh, we were in foxholes all that night, <clears throat> and the next morning uh, I had sand blown in my face. I figured, well, the wind blowing, and uh, didn't think anything about it. Pretty soon, the sand flew in my face again, and uh, after the third time, I got to looking around. There was three cents sand where a sniper was trying to get me. Wow, and. Uh, we had as I, I got a hold. I got a hold of the platoon sergeant. I told him, I says, let's do this. I says, I'm gonna. Uh, uh, when the Japs, uh, Japs were always in a. Uh, uh, a lot of the snipers were in what they called spider holes. The spider holes where they would dig, uh, dig down in the ground and put something over it like it was vegetation, and and they could lift the lid any time they wanted to shoot somebody, and. Uh, Anyway, we found out where he was. He got him, and uh, from then on, we went uh, on D plus one. We moved up to a uh, a, uh, a little small coconut grove. We're heading for the uh, for the blockhouse, and uh, uh, sometimes funny things happen. And this this particular time, something funny did happen. And uh, uh, so we were we were laying down on top of the sand because the the, uh, the it was a coral island, and uh, hell you only had about six inches of sand on top of the coral. You, you could dig in the sand, but you couldn't dig in the coral. So we were laying on top of the ground, and something was scratching on my foot. Oh my God! Here, I said, here comes one of them damn Japanese, you know, the infiltrators, you know, to try to stab you and so forth. And uh, and he was feeling this foot here, and uh, then the moon came out, and here was one hell of a big land crab. And so I just waited. He got on top of my foot, and I kicked him backwards, letting someone else's hold. He screamed like hell too. That is, uh, but uh, then the next day, the next day, uh, that is on D, uh, D plus two. Uh, we headed back. Uh, we headed for the, uh, the lock house. I mean the the block house again. 
and as we came as we came up near the blockhouse, the uh, the path that we were on took a 90 degree to the right up to the blockhouse, and right at the corner, right at the corner of the uh, where we turned, there was three Japs, apparently dead Japs, lay it. And there was two on the bottom and one on the top, one on the top of the two. And uh, uh, as we went by them, I, I you know, I, just, I took about five steps, five steps past them, and I was the last one, the last man in the line. And uh, I thought, damn it! I said, there's no blood on that guy, no blood on the guy on the top. And I, as I turned around. As I turned around, I noticed he was just trying to start to pull a hand grenade out off from underneath his stomach. And I let him have it. That is, uh, or else, else he could have killed quite a few of us. Uh, and then we got to the blockhouse, and uh, there was about 15 Japs here, but they were all dead. So we hauled them out of there. We hauled them out of there, and. Uh, uh, and this, put them in behind some rocks uh, because they were going to use that blockhouse for uh, medication, you know, that is for operation and so forth. Uh, so, uh, anyway, anyway let, let's see, I went to the blockhouse. Yeah, okay. Uh, so then we, we kind of hung around that blockhouse because. Uh, like I say, all the Japs in that ter little part of the territory had been killed. And uh, so we just kind of hung around there, and uh, one time we had to go up on uh, Walt Ridge and get some, get some uh, casualties with stretchers. And uh, then the next day, the next day, uh, uh, we went on patrol. Or short, on a short patrol, and he, and he got back, and uh, we were told we were told we were ha we were supposed to go back up on the ridge again uh, for, for the night and reinforce uh, what was left of uh, the guys up there. And uh, this was so, Walt Ridge. Huh? This was Walt Ridge. The ridge. It was Walt Ridge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And. Uh, so anyway, we we started we started up started up that uh, that, that coral outcroppings and so forth. It was called the Umbago Mountains, is what it was called. And uh, we were about halfway up there, and here come two guys down from Walt Ridge with a uh, with a, uh, <coughs> a stretcher and uh, our. Um, our platoon leader came back, and what these guys wanted, they wanted someone to, to take the stretcher and take it down to the uh, to the uh, to the blockhouse, so they could work on the guy. And then they wanted to get back up to their people. So uh, there was a uh, myself and a uh, and a friend I went around with in the court. That is uh, Eugene Dudley. From Indiana, and him and I were the last ones in the line. So Joe says uh, that was our uh, Joe Kavoriak was our uh, platoon sergeant, <coughs> and uh, uh, Joe says, "Well, he says take the uh, take this take this guy down uh, down to the aid station," and he says, "By the time by the time you get down there and start by, it's going to be dark." So he says, "You you you stay down there and guard the guard the aid station." <clears throat> so, uh, 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 Dudley and I f fixed our self a place where we were back to back. He was that way, and I was that way. And you could also see this way. And sure enough, oh hell, it must have been two o'clock in the morning. Uh, we spied two Japs sneaking, sneaking, uh, sneaking. The, you know, there was a moon out, so we couldn't miss the guys. And uh, <clears throat> uh, 
from what we found later, we figured their intentions was to uh, grenade grenade the uh, aid station. And uh, as it turned out, uh, I got one and Dudley got one. And both of them had two hand grenades uh, with them. So, uh, and, and no, uh, and, and no uh, firearm. So the, their their intention was to get down there and uh, and, uh, and 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 blow blow the a, the inside of the A station up. So anyway, the, the next morning came and, and our platoon came down from the Walsh Ridge, and uh, we were told right away to make this move uh, around the. Uh, uh, Around this outcropping of coral, and uh, and uh, looking for Japs, and uh, <clears throat> so uh, we didn't have a night's nice sleep. So anyway, anyway, we uh, uh, we talk off towards this towards this uh, coral outcropping because it was only a short ways from the uh, from the A station, and. Uh, uh, because it went like this, I mean, the, that is, the road went like this, and here is this outcropping and so forth, then the, the road went around like this, uh, on an old dirt road. And uh, I had just reached the point where it started around, and all hell broke loose, mortars. Uh, and they had they had the damn place they rode in. I mean, I, that is you could tell by the way they were hit. And uh, uh, probably the first, or second, or third mortar that, that came in and got me, but blew part of my hand out. And uh, so I, uh, so I, I uh, just I, I had to I had to go to the A station. So I got up to go to the A station, and. Uh, like I say, it wasn't like his hair and up. I was down here, and this guy was up here at Willie Parks. And as I start up towards the A station, I see a, a, a mortar hit, and I blew, I blew a, a, a Willie Parks up in the air. He came down on the side of his face and his shoulder and so forth. Never got a piece of shrapnel to any, but uh, he was stunned. He was stunned. And uh, at that particular time, I threw away all thoughts of mortars coming in. I had to get to Willie and help him. So, uh, uh, and that was a, it was a uh, area probably, probably 50, 60 yards, you know, where I was and where Willie went up in the air. And anyway, I walked through. I walked through. I gave no thought to mortars. No, no thought to mortars. And uh, uh, my only thought was to get to Willie. And uh, I finally got over to him, and another mortar came in and chipped a piece of my leg off. Uh, and uh, uh, so I finally, I, I, I could, I, I couldn't get him awake. And so I took my canteen and poured what water I had left on him. And that, that got him awake a little bit, and he got up, and the whole side of his face was nothing but blood. Because what had, what had happened, he had, he had never got it, never got a piece of shrapnel, but he had been blown up in the air, and when he came down, his face was uh, 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 hit hit the coral, and just just tore little holes in you know in the side of his face. And he says, "My face is gone." I said, "No, Willie." I says, "You you're all right." So I about half carried him, half half walked him, you know, and we finally got up to the aid station, and then on it was uh, both of us evacuated. So, uh, but uh, I often wonder about, uh, you know, that is why, and that I think it's a Marine Corps spirit that made me instead of instead of say the hell I want to get the hell away out of the, out of this border attack. Uh, I think any Marine would have done the same thing that I'd done. He would have he would have thrown a caution to the wind and uh, done the same thing I had done. And 
uh, I, I was very proud of that moment. Very proud of that moment. That is, but it is, in other words, the Marines are trained. Marines are trained. You know, if you got a buddy down, you go get him. Uh, you don't leave him behind. But uh, that is, I like I say, I never even thought of mortars once I got hit and well, they went up in the air. That is so. Uh, 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 later on, years later, we met. We met, and uh, I was I was overcome by it. I cried when I when I met him. You know, he was from Brewer, Maine, and I was from Canton, Ohio. But uh, so, uh, and I really well, of course, I was evacuated. I was evacuated to uh, Guadalcanal first. And then uh, they took me off of Guadalcanal and sent me to Los Negros. There was a um, there was a battalion of the CBs there. First first ice cream I'd eaten in a long time. And uh, and they finally put me on the plane to Los Negros and flew me to Espiritu Santo. Uh, and I was to be there until until the wound healed over. And uh, but I was to be sent back to the states because uh, uh, the only place they were doing plastic surgery then was uh, in Chicago. But I, I we landed at San Diego. I was there for a while until they shipped me down to, back to Chicago. So but, uh, and that was that was the end of the fighting and so forth. Uh, but later on, later on, uh, the, the battleship Missouri got its radar shot away. And after I had been after I had been evacuated from the hospital and so forth, I mean, uh, I was back out at Camp Pendleton, and uh, we were getting ready to go to Japan. We were getting ready to go to Japan, and. Uh, uh, but then the A-bomb dropped, and uh, if you had so many points, your points were by overseas duties, uh, wounded in action, th things like that. If you had so many points, you could opt out of, of going over, because the guys are going over then, at that time, then were going to China uh, to save the Japanese from the Chinese. But, uh, but uh, and uh, but I opted out and uh, got out of the Marine Corps. That is, that was it. So, uh, when you were at Pendleton, getting ready to go to Japan, yeah, what yeah. outfit were you with? Uh, I was with uh, the Ninth Motor Pool. Okay. Ninth Motor Pool. Now, I just noticed that when you were talking. You went into great detail about Peleliu, yeah. But you kind of glossed over Cape Gloucester. Uh huh. Is, is there a oh. reason for that? Uh, well, no, Cape Gloucester. Uh, uh, Cape, Cape Gloucester was a funny place. That is, that is. But uh, we never ran into Japanese until. Probably hell, week ten days later, week uh, after uh, after we'd landed, because we we went over to LSTs, and uh, we went over to LSTs and uh, landed, and we then we uh, we kind of marched or whatever you want you know. There was uh, the, the 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 jungle grew it up right up to the edge of the ocean. There might have been a area six foot wide of sand. But from from there, from, from the six foot wide on back, with nothing but jungle, and uh, we uh, uh, we marched down until we uh, until we come to a big opening, and uh, we got word that there was going to be there was a Japs landing on at the north of Cape Gloucester, and that we were we were to uh, we were to uh, uh, form a uh, uh, what do you call it? The 
line of defense, line of defense. Uh, it was a, uh, it was a, uh, one of these Aussie I, I don't know, reporters, you know, that they had reported, you know, troop movements and so forth. Uh, what, uh, what the hell do they call them? Uh, uh, Coast Watchers, Coast Watchers. Uh, but uh, uh, it didn't materialize. So we were we were doing nothing but trying to we're trying to build roads and and uh, and uh, uh, once in a while once in a while they'd, they'd call us to blow a blow a uh, blow a cave because we uh, that was when the composition suit C two come out a plastic uh, explosive and. Uh, uh, but we really didn't do a heck of a lot until we started to chase this, uh, this General Homa. And I think I gave you the, the information on that. But, did, uh, did you land on D-Day? Yes, yeah, okay. yeah. Yellow Beach? Uh, Christ, I'm not, I'm not sure which one okay. it was. I know on Pell that we landed on White, but uh, I don't know. It, uh, Matter of fact, there was nothing to the landing. I mean, the hill was unopposed. The LST pulled right up to the shore, dumped us off. Right. Uh, matter of fact, that uh, uh, that book, uh, that book, you know, the, the couple of things I left here. I did seen did you see them? No. Well, in the book, there's a lot of pictures of the Cape Gloucester operation and a lot of pictures of the whole new operation and uh, if, if you go through those pictures and uh, basically basically uh, Cape Gloucester was a very easy operation uh, not like not like Pelo uh, so but from a uh, combat standpoint huh? from a combat from standpoint. a combat perspective yeah that is, uh, Tell me about the weather on Cape Gloucester. Uh, the weather, weather was nothing but rain, 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 rain. It is. It was the wet season down there, and uh, you need a poncho, just two damn poncho away to get wet. Oh. I heard uh, one veteran describe it as not just rain, but like living under a fire hose. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. But now on Pelotu, we never got anything like that. Right. Hell, Pelotu was crazy. 125 dollars 125 during the day. Maybe yeah. 110 at night. And, uh, well, I can get back to talk about Pelotu in a minute. Um, Cape Gloucester, where you landed, the um, intelligence had described that as the damp flat. No, that's and right. So, it, but it turned out to be a little more than damp. So I would imagine that your the uh -huh. engineers were quite busy with the with the roads. Yeah, well, that is we had a we had a hill called Six Sixty, and all it was was uh, it was about well six hundred sixty feet high, and it, all it was was uh, was uh, uh, volcano ash. Because when we landed at Cape Gloucester, originally, you could walk off to the uh, look off to the uh, to the east, and there was an active volcano. There were five active volcanoes on New New Britain Island, and uh, every time we landed, like like we went up to Talasia, uh, sure enough, out the distance was another volcano, and they had these burbling mud like you know they have in uh, 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 what's that? Uh, Park out out west, Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Uh, you you ever been there? No. That is, they have the bubbling mud and so forth. They had us they had it on pole. I mean not on uh, on Cape Gloucester. So I'm getting tired. You're getting tired. Yeah. Uh, we better finish then. Huh? We better finish then. But uh, when you're on Peleliu, you said it was so hot. What? On Peleliu, you said it was so hot. Yeah. It says, I understand there was a problem with the water that was brought ashore. Oh, well, yeah, the way out of big water problem, that is. What happened there was uh, that uh, back on Pavobu, uh they had given 
I don't know what the hell outfit it was back on Pavuvu, but they gave him uh, these gasoline cans to clean. Uh, to clean, you know, so we could use them for water barrels, you know, over on, on Pavuvu. But they never cleaned the damn water. Uh, it never cleaned it all out. And there was, there was a little one pond on Peleliu called Grimlington Pond that I think we finally started getting water from that Grimlington Pond. But uh, the water you got out of them barrels wasn't fit to drink. That is, you probably got sicker if you drank the stuff because you had to taste the oil. Had to taste the oil and gasoline, yeah. Uh, but uh, so, what did you do? Uh, we had to wait for them to bring new water in. That is, uh, uh, in that heat. And actually, actually, we were issued two two canteens. We were issued two canteens, and I myself don't remember of ever using all my water. So, you know, uh, I don't think water, in my respect, was an issue. Uh, in, uh, in respect of others, it would be. But uh, matter of fact, I can't even remember eating on Pelo Uh And I was there for, uh, well, I was there uh, four days. Uh, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th. Then I was hit the morning of the 19th. So I was actually really only, only there for uh, four, uh, four days and one morning. Because they evacuators went to the hospital ships right away. Okay. Um, are there any incidents? Huh? Are there any incidents during your service time that uh, stand out? Good or bad? Oh. Well, I'll tell you about the good times. I'll tell you about the good times. Uh, Remember, I tell you, I, I told you about uh, Peleliu, that uh, uh, not Peleliu, but Cape Gloucester, uh, where uh, we we went over to a small island, and uh, uh, I cut I cut timber for to build build back on the Pooh Uh and at night we'd we'd uh, we'd build a bonfire and sit around the bonfire and. Uh, uh, shoot the bull. And uh, this small iron went over to, to cut this wood. It had uh, papaya trees. And uh, this one night I decided to get a papaya, you know, and uh, then, then you go sit among the crowd and shoot the bull. So anyway, I, I got the papaya and over, over when we was sitting around the bonfire, that is, uh, uh, I cut open his papaya, and uh, and I'm eating, eating uh, one part over here, and I lay another part down here on 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 the bench we had made out. And lo and behold, I uh, I felt something scratching me, you know, and I looked down. Here's a little animal. He crawled out of the jungle. He jumped up on the what you call it. They were chewing on that on that uh, on that papaya, and then it, it looked at me, kept on chewing, and finally got enough, and back in the joke I went. That is, uh, it was it was quite odd. Uh, another instance uh, was. Uh, uh, on the other where we were cutting the timber, we had a limb that went out over the out over the ocean, and way down the bottom you could uh, real blue water you could see uh, octopus, and uh, and uh, uh, a lot of us got together and wanted to see who could dive down to get an octopus first, but they were down too deep, but. But the water is just so clear, just like looking through a glass. But, uh, uh, and the probably the hairiest part, 
probably the hardest part was either the guy, that Jap trying to snipe me or probably, probably the, uh, the motor attack. That was probably the, that was probably the worst thing you know, that uh, I come across. Yeah. Okay. So. I want to finish up here for you. I got one last question. How has your Marine Corps experience affected your life? Uh, well, uh, I was nothing but a mum before I joined the Marine Corps, and after the after the Marine Corps, I was not a mum anymore. That is uh, basically the only thing I did. I never drank until I got into the Marine Corps, and then I became an alcoholic after. You know, it was a macho thing to drink in the Marine Corps. If 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 you didn't drink, you weren't macho. So, uh, and. Uh, you can get that from some of the damn movies they had out. Because this one guy, you know, uh, I forget his name, but uh, he was uh, always drinking you know, in the Marine Corps, always getting in trouble. I can't remember what the guy's name was. So. But the uh, Marine Corps didn't make me drink. I mean, I just, I, well, like these guys here, or, you know, they drink this here and they drink that and they get along all right and they do this and do that. I'm going to do it too, but uh, it's the thing to do. Didn't work out. Didn't work out. So I finally, I finally uh, uh, started a. a that it was. Now, see, I, I got drunk and drowned. I got drunk and I drowned. I was not breathing when they pulled me out. They brought me back to life, and I told the Lord, I says, pull me through this, and I says, I'll never touch whiskey again. And I haven't. Have so, when was that? That is, that was 2007. Really? Yeah. Wow. 2007. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, the Marine Corps also taught me discipline. That is, uh, you know, that is how to discipline yourself. That is how to treat others. Because the camaraderie of the Marine Corps is probably better, better than none. Better is better than any of them. That is, uh, you can uh, you could have six or seven Army guys, you know, sitting in the bar. You know, they all knew they were in the Army, and they don't talk to one another. Uh, you can do the same with the Navy, but if you get if you get eight or ten Marines, you know, together. And they knew they were in the Marine Corps. Hell, you, they, they'll carry on a conversation forever. Matter of fact, one time we were uh, we were on the ferry from Lewes, Delaware, over to Cape May, New Jersey. And uh, I went up to the captain. I told him, I says, uh, "Hey, captain," I says, uh, "How about announcing over the phone for all former Marines to to report?" The, uh, uh, forward, and uh, it wasn't it wasn't more than ten minutes before you, we had about fifteen Marines up there, all shooting the bull. So uh, uh, it it did teach you camaraderie. I mean, really, there was probably there was probably no more camaraderie camaraderie in any any of the uh, any of the military than the Marine Corps. So, but, uh, and actually, it is, of course, you're always going to get a nut, you know. I don't care, I don't care what, what branch you're in. And, uh, uh, but it, it really, it really taught you to, that is, to take care of yourself. I mean, that is, uh, look out for others. Uh, because uh, I think I, I would I would yeah, throw that back to the point where if a buddy's down, get him. Don't let him lay there. Okay. Okay. Anything else you'd like to say? <sighs> tired. That's good enough. I'm tired. We're done. Okay.